My name is Cindy Carroll, and I'm a pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in downtown Dallas, and I was ordained in 2011. So uh, if you could tell us, Cindy, how did you experience your call to ministry? Tell us a little bit about your call. <laughs> well, I'll see if I can keep it short. <laughs> you know, I've been up um, in the church since I was born, born and baptized, confirmed, and always passionate about uh, serving God and being a disciple of Jesus. Um, but I think when I was growing up, people didn't really think of asking women to be pastors. Uh, so I, I had a career path, but then um, in the uh, 1990s, I had gotten to know the uh, president of PLTS through my work as director for communications in region one. And so he and I were having discussions and he invited me to um, consider being an ordained pastor. So that was the first formal invitation. And so we continued to have discussions and I went to Berkeley and, um, but then on my um, career path, I took on fundraising and development. And uh, so I was living in Washington state. And one day I decided, um, I had been ta actually talking to the seminary about uh, going to seminary, but then the job opening opened up to work in the development office and I was hired. And so then, uh, you know, I wanted to be in the uh, classes and I started taking classes on the side. And it ended up that after a couple of years, I was um, meeting with a large donor with the president of the seminary. And out of the blue, they asked me this question. Um, have you been thinking about seminary and what are you going to do about it? And uh, about five days later, uh, when I got back home, because uh, this had happened in San Diego and I came back to Berkeley and someone else asked me the same question. So that was the triggering moment to say, um, God's calling me and um, let's get serious. And so uh, that was spring and by summer I was in Greek classes. And <laughs> and on my journey, so. Very cool. Well, you mentioned about um, previous careers. So what kinds of things in your previous careers um, have helped you in ministry? Well, my um, career before um, becoming a pastor was in communications, public relations, and then in marketing. And then in, um, I took on the addition I became fluent and good at doing fundraising development. <laughs> and so all of those skills uh, are very helpful and translatable to the parish. So, uh, you know, uh, if somebody says, are we doing a stewardship program? Well, they don't even have to ask because I've already been thinking about it. And um, so that's um, a, a gift. And then just making sure that people are kept up with things uh, as well as the marketing, like, um, because of that, you know, I'm attentive to social media as well as getting nice print materials out uh, to the community. So not just for internal purposes, but that let's get to know our neighbors as well as to tell our story. What role do you see women playing in the future of the church? Well, they've already, um, are, um, showing up more and more and becoming ordained. And uh, so that's really positive. But I also see a lot of women in the church who are lay leaders. I mean, mo all the churches I've been in and when I worked in Region 1, the, there were many uh, women leaders and they were competent. Uh, they were strong in their faith. They um, understood theology and scriptures. And I think that's really important um, I'm in a bilingual congregation, um, English and uh, Spanish worship. So uh, actually most of our young people are Hispanic Latinas. And we have uh, three parish lay uh, ministers now. And there's other uh, young leaders who are competent. And all I have to do is really just em empower them and encourage them. And they're, they're the future of the church. So uh, I'm just uh, excited that God is working uh, through them and uh, the Holy Spirit is moving them forward because our church needs 
uh, both ordained women as well as uh, lay leaders. How do female images of God shape your theology or ministry? Well, I'm a person that um, I love images and art, and uh, I do have a, um, a collection of uh, images that show the divine in women, and a lot of them are um, Mary, uh, you know, but there's uh, different um, images for her. Some are more serene and peaceful, so that's, I, I need to see that face, but I also, they have the, the uh, uh, embodied courage and, uh, courage and strength. And um, so it's, it's good for me to see an image that looks back at me, either smiling or in defiance or whatever, um, that, um, that I uh, have someone that I, I can look to. And I see that in real people, but there's just something powerful about art and images that um, speak to me and keep, keep me going. <laughs> For someone considering ministry today, what advice might you have for them? I would uh, say listen and uh, don't doubt the, the voice that uh, you hear inside of you. Uh, but it, and the call, uh, calls, whether they're, a, whatever call it is, um, it happens in conversation. And so I think it's really important that um, that we uh, help women and empower them to be able to feel like we, we can be their competent, but also that they can talk to other people in the, in the community to uh, talk about what's stirring up inside of them and the passion that they have. And um, there is a young woman in uh, my congregation that people have look to her she's in her early 20s she's been a leader since she was in high school and she's gotten involved in things uh, in the synod and like with elca youth gatherings and uh, hispanic latina elca um, committees and uh, she's been in conversation and uh, so we've we, I think our, the role of us is to help foster them, but just to keep the conversation alive. It might not end up the way they first imagined. Maybe it's, it's not the call to be a pastor, but maybe it's because you're going to be some kind of a, an advocate, advocate for people. Um, and there's many ways, but just uh, to encourage and um, until they come to that aha moment that says, this is how God is calling me and, and to encourage that um, and pray with them too. So um, uh, you've been a pastor for almost 10 years now. Um, what sustains you spiritually? <laughs> well, what grounds me and has always grounded me uh, is the scriptures. I have several worn out Bibles, <laughs> many kinds of Bibles uh, that I, I refer to. And so I think it uh, starts with, with the Word of God and speaking to me and, uh, like I said, uh, engaging with other people. Um, one of the uh, things that I've uh, put together in this congregation and, and in other congregations is a group of people that are going to go on that journey to read the scriptures and talk about how God is working in their lives and uh, to have prayer time together. Um, I'm also um, blessed to, that my husband's a pastor and um, so we can talk about scriptures and especially when I'm writing sermons, what do you, what do you think about this idea? But we also have a, a practice, a morning practice of prayer. It's kind of this uh, combination of, of Tai Chi and some movements and breathing. And so feeling God's presence from the beginning of the, the day as the sun's rising in the morning and um, praying uh, for people that we know and for the church and the world uh, together just in movement and, and silence is 
really uh, one of the most grounding things that for me and keeping me alive in the spirit.